right, hello wine drinking people. Time for more of what I've had to drink yesterday and you know what the empty table means. We don't have any of these wines in the store, but I can tell you it's not going to be empty long with wines like this and our friends from Neil Rosenthal just continuing to bombard us with great stuff. And man, I love Burgundy and it's getting harder and harder to find Chassan, Pellini, Merceau, the three top villages for white have such a huge demand. The prices are going up, man. The last few vintages were really small. All of these wines in this tasting are worthy of being on my shelf. And I'm gonna pick up every single last one because I wanna drink these wines. This is my kind of stuff. They started out with a little Chablis, the 2011 Jean and Sebastian Dalvisat. Not the famous Vincent Dalvisat, but uh, another member of the Dalvisat clan. We don't know how many there are in Chablis, but don't be confused. This is a very good producer, but not the top level Dalvisat. A very earthy, mineral-driven style. And uh, this producer's got both holdings in Premier and Grand Cru also. This is their entry-level cuvee. A nice amount of that seashell kind of briny minerality you get from uh, Chablis, chalky notes, lemon citrus. Good amount of earth, man. Really, uh, I don't know if you would guess this is anything but Chablis in a blind tasting. If I picked it as anything but Chablis, man, I would be very disappointed in myself. Very typical, that lean and chalky note showing through on the palate. The nice mineral lace finish, lemon lime zest. Really classic Chablis, very refreshing at $32.50. All right, then up the Daniel Etienne Defoe. Uh, Defay, I feel French class in high school and in college. This is a Premier Cru Chablis from 2002. We already reviewed this once, but it's so good we're going to review it again. This is a Premier Cru right behind the Vallon crew, and uh, man, held back for Neil Rosenthal. He has got some clout. This is really nice evolution in this wine showing, but still really fresh, even outstanding on the second day. You get that lovely lemon zest, that marzipan, that evolution showing here, some nice candy fruit, but still, like I said, really nice and fresh on the finish, showing a, a lovely development here on the palate as well. Lovely creaminess in the mid palate, drinking close to its peak, but man, you think this wine would last another decade. Like I said, still really nice and fresh, even on the second day, a great value at 66.50. All right, the Henry Gilles Bousson Saint Roman, and this is a bit higher in altitude than Marceau, which uh, you know a lot of times they had problems getting these grapes ripe in the past. But with global warming, man, they don't have too much trouble anymore. This 2011, a really juicy vintage. It's got a little bit of vanilla spice here, a little new oak in this, but fresh apple and pear fruit, some almond notes, a good hand of minerality, flinty nuance coming out of the bouquet. Even more on the second day, a nice touch of oak spice to the green apple and lemon citrus fruit here on the palate. Nice weight on the tongue with tongue tingly minerality shown through the finish. Excellent juice at $41. All right, the Henri Poudon and Field St. Alban Premier Cru. St. Alban can be a great little value and uh, 2009, a very showy vintage. This is a great vintage for both red and white. And with whites, it's just a really fruit-driven vintage to me. This is a small parcel, only one-third of an acre, and the vines are 15 years old. These 25% new oak, you get that nice touch of anise and spice and lemon drop uh, candy fruit. Really nice intensity here, uh, really forward with some nice flinty mineral notes coming out on the second day, even more complex, concentrated and rich on the tongue with a solid core of tree fruit, smooth and creamy on the tongue with layers of fruit and a tongue tingly minerality, firm acidity here. This wine's drinking really nicely now. Wonderful structure and depth, should last another decade. Like I said, even better on the second day, 42.50, a great value. And then the Chassan, we got one, two, three, three Chassans in a row. And what a great little uh, tasting this was, man. I'll tell you what, this these Henri Poudon wines, Jean-Marc Pilo and Jean-Marc Moray, uh, three Chassans in a row. Chenevats, which is a great premier crew. Les Chambre and Caillere, uh, another top-level premier crew. And, uh, man, let me tell you, to have this Pilo wine in between these two premier crews and have it hang in there, Les Chambre is just a Liudi. Uh, not to be mistaken for Chomes, which is a premier crew here also, but the Pudin wine, 2009. This wine, 40-year-old vines here and shows incredible concentration on the nose. Jolly lemon, Jolly Rancher candy, kind of honey green apple, notes of toasty oak spice and gravelly minerally notes there. Really nice intensity in this wine. The wine's very big and fat on the tongue with layers of ripe tree fruit, strong mineral presence on the finish, really long and layered, holding up beautifully on the second day with even smoother and creamier texture, lots of minerality. This wine should last another decade in your cellar at $59.50. Wow, incredible value for Chenevots and from a great vintage. 2009 Chasson Le Chaume from Jean-Marc Pilo. This wine's got a really lovely mineral zesty kind of bouquet to it with the matchstick notes, really ripe 
pineapple and lemon citrus fruits. Really rich and forward bouquet. There are some flinty aromas here as well coming out on the second day. Really complex and nuanced for a Leo D. Really nice amount of ripe tree fruit shown on the tongue. Long mineral lace finish. Really nice freshness. Toasty oak spice and smooth and creamy on the palate. Again, these 2009s have got a lot of richness to them. Really showy right now. Uh, 6250. Excellent juice as well. I think I like the shit a lot better. And uh, for Mr. Putin, though, for less money. All right, and then uh, the Le Cayure wine from Jean-Marc Moray, and he's a little better known at 9650. This wine's uh, among one of the best Premier Cruise sites, though. Incredible bouquet here, lemon Jolly Rancher candy, lightly toasted oak spice, butter toast, marzipan, really distinguished wine. These 2010s are really well built, and uh, this wine's well endowed on the tongue as well. Layers of ripe fruit, really complex spice and mineral notes, leaving the tongue refreshed and ready for the next sip. This wine needs some time. These 2010s, a little more classic style, but even bigger on the second day. The finish on this wine just seems to go on and on. Most excellent juice. Definitely the best of the three Chassans in my book, but um, you know the first wine, definitely the best in terms of price. You almost get two bottles for one of these. The Bitazu Premier Cru, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Prior. Bitazu Prior are two different families that join together to form this property. Uh, Clos de Cromen, Merceau, this wine showing a little bit of development, is 2007. Nice candied apple and Asian pear fruit to the nose. Notes of creme caramel and vanilla bean spice here. A really rich and forward bouquet. A wine that still comes together nicely on the palate, even though it's showing some evolution there. That candied apple fruit, and tangy mineral notes lasting on the finish, and some kind of vanilla cream pie notes. Really excellent bottle of Merceau. Showing lovely development at 64.50. And then the big boy, the Courtois Charlemagne from Domaine Roland Perifils. And uh, man, this is one of the greatest values in Grand Cru whites from Burgundy today at $135. Man, this wine's got a big bouquet of aromas. 2008, a classic vintage for whites. Some lovely toasty matchstick notes to the pineapple and pear fruit. Lovely aromatics in this wine. Lots of minerality. Very big nose and uh, really nice structure on the palate. Man, this wine even bigger on the second day, showing lots of everything, a long layered finish. Man, this wine needs more time and a killer juice. The finish just seems to go on and on with this wine. I'd like to try it 10 or 20 years from now. Most excellent tasting. Thank you very much, our friends from Neil Rosenthal. I'm your host, Andrew Lampasoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.